Previously on Living Free Alaska, we finally got the call we'd been waiting for all summer. A roadkill moose was down and we were next on the charity meat program. After spending several days processing, we are at the tail end of this ginormous job and today we are making sure that nothing goes to waste with this moose and processing down the bones to make a delicious bone broth to enjoy for months to come. Join us today here on Living Free Alaska. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Oh, the moose escapade does not stop. No, as we, as I had said before, we're going to try to use as much moose as this, as possible um, to get all the benefit from what Mother Nature has provided to our family. So right now, I've got the moose bones lined up on this table right here, and uh, I'll be cutting them up for a stock, a bone stock or a moose moose stock, if you would, if you will. A bone broth. A bone broth. There you yeah. go. So today is Saturday, August 3rd. Mm -hmm. We finished processing on July 30th. So that was only four days ago. We've kept the bones on ice. Yeah, they're very cold. <laughs> <laughs> and knowing that we were going to do this. Yep. And um, after this is complete, we have done almost everything we can right. with this moose. Really hardly anything went to waste. What waste we did have went to the chickens. Right. Well, I wouldn't even call that waste. That's still food for the chickens. Uh, the only true not usable was the hide, the the skull, backbone, and, and guts. You know, and those were appropriately dealt with already. They were discarded out in the swamp, and they mm -hmm. will go to feed other animals. Correct. And there's already evidence of that, uh, right. where it was buried by uh, our friend that did it. He's noticed that a little brownie, a little grizz, mm -hmm. has come and disturbed the area. Right. So that that part of the moose has also not gone to waste. No, it's feeding nature. It's feeding nature. Yeah. So, and this is just the start of the stock in the kitchen. I've got things going too. So we'll get down that way soon too. Those are all cut up. We've got to take the bins in and weigh them. See how much we got so I can uh, adjust the recipe appropriately for the bone broth. I mean, it's really not a technical recipe as onions and celery and carrots and oh my, um, but it's kind of want to have the right ratios. So uh, we'll go in and get a scale and see what we can do. Speaking of scale, Woo, it's a good thing right now. So we're not afraid of scales right now. We're not afraid of scales. Our last video last week, it was from a couple of weeks ago when we gave you our latest update. And as of the starting the start of August, what are you down? I haven't weighed for like five, six days, but last time it was like 40 pounds. And I am down 32 pounds. That is freaking awesome. Yes. Holy cow. We still have a ways to go for like our goals. Yep. But um, weight loss isn't our only reason why we're doing this. Uh, but yeah, 32 pounds and 40 pounds. That's a lot of weight. Good, good job, babe. Uh, yeah. Still, yeah. Still we'll we'll save on that one. <laughs> we'll wait. We'll get that one later. You thought you'd have a
All right, veggies in, bones in the oven as well. We're gonna do a roast of bones about an hour or so. And same thing with the veggies, maybe a little bit less for the veggies. And then uh, put it all together in a stock pot or two. One hour later. Roast it for one hour. Oh, look at those onions. Mm. Oh, that smells so good. Oh, yeah, they do. Uh, they smell really good. So the bones got another, about another half hour or so before I pull them out of the oven. So we'll let these veggies cool down. I'm gonna get the stock pots ready with some water so I can boil them off for a little while first. And then we're gonna add the veggies to it and just let it go overnight. Long, slow simmer. While the bones are roasting in the oven, I'm doing a little prep work here. I've got my assorted spices here, uh, salt and pepper, rosemary, thyme, uh, bay leaves, allspice, cloves, um, that's about it in there. And then I've got a couple of smoked ham hocks just for a little bit of extra flavor in the uh, stock itself. Currently we're eating a carnivore based diet, but with the quantity of stock that I'm making, this is going to last us for a year or so and I'm not sure if we're going to be carnivore for that full year so this will be a great stock to round out any meal that we cook in our next in our continuing efforts of eating better uh, whether that be keto or whatever, whatever it may be uh, this stock will just be handy for everything we could possibly think of okay the bones have been roasting for about an hour and uh, time to take them out and uh, throw them in the pots Woo. You know, it was on, this is a steam oven, but it has several different modes. It's on a convection mode now, but it just seals the moisture in there. So that's why that ball of steam came out when I opened it up. Oh, that liquid looks good. Oh, it's heavy. 14 pounds. Mmm. Smart man won't touch these bones right now. They're hot. And also, look at all that juice in the bottom of this pan. It is going to go in that sock pot. So you roast the bones to get a little bit more flavor out of them. It softens the marrow a little bit. So then when you boil the stock down, the marrow can come out of the bone a little easier and, and, and help flavor the stock. Just gives it more of a full body flavor. So the first process, the first step, well the next step I guess, not first, but I'm going to bring this to a heavy boil and that's going to have some of the collagens and some of the sticky fats and such are going to come out of the bone and it'll be uh, surfacing towards the top and we'll scrape that off as it comes out of the bone. See, now the difference with the steam oven, all that moisture that was kept in the pan was in, still cooking in the, in the bones. Now that this isn't the steam oven, there's no moisture in there. That's kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Where do you think, where do you think this bone goes? Hip. That's a hip. A knee. Another, this is the back knee. The other one was the front knee. I've got a friend that says he uses a uh, a beer keg. He's kind of cut the top off of a beer keg and uses that for this process. Only uses one bowl, one big old pot. I don't have a beer keg. Making this work.
Well, as you can see, my idea of doing two stock pots was not quite enough. So we had to go out and find a couple more. I would have rather had some bigger ones, but a couple of smaller ones, no big deal. Uh, right now, I'm bringing everything up to a boil. I want to boil it for 10 or so minutes um, and get some of the fatty, frothy stuff that comes off the top. Get that out of the mix. And then I'll cool it down and uh, throw some veggies in there, the spices and the ham hocks, and then let it simmer on out for the rest of the night. Okay, everything's, everything's been boiling for about I don't know, 10, 12 minutes now. Uh, not a whole bunch of fatty stuff coming off the top. Uh, I'm gonna turn down the heat now, down to low, and then uh, add in some veggies and the ham hocks. And this just adds a little bit extra flavor to the stock. You know, it's always good to have more flavor. That's Why use utensils when you can use what God's given you? All the juice in there, get in there. Some good stuff there. Now, since there are bones in there and down the bottom, it's really hard to stir. So, it's, uh, in what I've been reading, it suggested that you don't stir. You just let it go, not even a, just a, a really, really low boil, just so the water's rolling in there. Because the water's hottest down lower in the pan, and as it gets, as it heats up, it rises rises and circulates the whole system. So the water's colder up here, hotter down there, so the hot water rises and circulates the whole pot of water in there, so everything will get stirred on its own via the boiling process. So, one thing I do have to do, I have to move this pan up there, because I have my extra low simmering burner back there. All four corners of an extra low simmering burner. Let them go for a little while, see how they do. And the stock will reduce as it, as it simmers off. The liquid level will reduce down. If it gets too low, I'll just simply add a little bit more. Once I remove the vegetables and the bones, I'll be able to combine all these pots into maybe one, I'm not sure. And that way all the flavor will be combined into one pot. So if it's a little bit different than each one, it'll be okay. It'll get combined there. Earlier, I pre-measured everything out into two servings, so I don't know. We'll just kind of divide some up. Do, do this and do that. One here, one there. That one's a bigger one, so it gets more. There we go, some of that. And there we go, some of that. Put one of those over there. It'll all get combined later. Now, since those are kind of just sitting on top, I will stir them in a little bit. The next day. Well, good morning. It's now the next day on our moose stock project. And uh, as you can see, we've got four stock pots on the stove still. Uh, we've lost quite a bit of liquid in each one of these stock pots. We've actually had to put more into that one. I guess that was hotter. But they've been simmering all night long. And uh, last night we got home. Uh, we went out for a while. We got home about 11 or so. And I peeled, I, I strained off quite a few of the veggies. There's a whole big old bowl full of veggies right here. They were in the stock pots. So all night last night it was just mainly the bones boiling down still. Um, but it's time to dig the bones out. So uh, we're going to get set up and do that. 
first thing I'm just gonna let these cool off for a few minutes so they're not boiling hot. Then I'll reach my hand in there and grab the bones. Probably not my hand. <laughs> Might be a little warm. So that's the next step. You know, I talked to Stacy this morning a little bit. Hey, look at all this. That would be great for the chickens, wouldn't it? That'd be amazing. And I did a little, little bit of research. Chickens can't have onions, garlic, leeks, shallots, or anything like that. And there is onions, and there's garlic, and there's leeks, and there's shallots in there. So that's not good chicken food. I guess that's just waste. Oh, that's all right. It was good flavor for this top. Let's get these bones out of here. I remember there being a lot more meat on that hip bone. I gotta strain this off too, but I can pick up some of the big chunks. Well, I have uh, removed all the bones and uh, strained out as many veggies and uh, other stuff as I could. Uh, but right now we just got the two full stock pots um, with the broth. And I'm still just kind of scooped out a little bit of the big stuff. Um, but it's looking good. There's still a little bit of fat on top, and I'll separate that out later. Over here, we've got the bones and, and uh, the rest of the veggies that were in there, and we'll just we'll dispose of that. I'll probably, uh, I don't know what we'll do. But we'll dispose of this somehow. Probably put it out on garbage day. Yeah, something like that. Don't know. If you know what to do with bones, let me know. I got most of the marrow out of the bones, so you can, you can kind of see through them. That's a good big one. Look at that. You can see right through the bone. The marrow's all out of it. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so the next process is let these cool down and then strain them off. Um, and then I got a pressure can and everything. And we got, we've got 32 ounce uh, jars that we have sanitized last night. And we'll put them in there and then pressure can them at some point today. Straining of the hot liquid. Oh. It's tied on, it shouldn't go anywhere. And now, transferring of the hot liquid, because my, oh, my pots aren't big enough. Um, so yeah, I always have a worry of my strainer falling off, so I put the strainer through the handle here and then tie the other end on to the other handle so the strainer is on there nicely. Um, but that's only the first strain. I want to strain it again, I think. I'll have to take a look and see how clear it is. I want to try to get most of the impurities out and nice, have some nice clear broth. So um, i got to clean this pot out and I'll get set up in a little bit to take care of that. Oh, here's two nice full stock pots of broth. I have strained it with cheesecloth. Got some of the biggest particles out of it. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, using this fat separator, 
I'll fill it into these canning jars and then slide on the seals and the rings and then we'll toss them into the uh, pressure cooker, pressure canner. I've got the pressure canner right here, a little bit of water inside and warming up. And when I've got the jars all full of broth, I'll bring the jars over here to the pressure canner and it's going to be 10 pounds of pressure for about 90 minutes. I believe I'll have to do two batches of this, so uh, that's three hours of cook time, so glad I started early today. Have some jars in the pantry that we can pull out and wash and use. Well, I thought I would go feed the chickens some of their moose scraps and share that with you at how much they really love this stuff. All right, ladies, come and get it. Well, there you see it, 14 quarts of bone broth already done here. And we've got 15 pints of broth still cool, cooling down, just finished cooking, now cooling down in the pressure canner. That's a lot of bone broth that we're gonna have for quite a while. And doing it in the canner, it's shelf stable for maybe a year or so. So there, there's quite a bit of opportunity to use this as we head into winter. That's the best time to have this kind of broth. I was just looking at all the different things that we can use this for. Oh yeah. Uh, not only for soups and stews, but um, we can actually drink this mm -hmm. as a alternative beverage, especially right. on our diet. Right, with the, the nutrients that are within this broth. It, it's so good for us. And I didn't put much salt into it. Um, so, it, you know, it, it's a milder, broth so we can salt it if we want to salt it more to drink um and go from there very cool yeah they say it's a superfood it's a superfood so well this moose just kept on giving yes i think i think we're done with it now i think we're done yes. uh even with the bones we asked our neighbor um we're like do you have any use of the bones and he's like no and if he doesn't have use for the bones there's probably not much Not more. Not much more, yep. yep. So mm -hmm. I think we'll hold on to them until morning on garbage day and yeah. they'll go to the landfill. I think that's right. All right. Well, I think a job well done. Job well done. Absolutely. Two-day process to get all this done. But man, it's going to feed us for a long time coming. All right. Love you. Love you too. All right. Let's head out to, head out to that bonfire. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you are notified whenever we post again. And lastly, we hope that you will join us here next time on Living 4-H.
Alaska.